Here we are, it's 2023, and I'm sure many of you are starting to get ready to take your TOEIC test. Well, you've come to the right place, because today we'll be looking at how you can pass TOEIC in 2023. So, the very first thing you want to do is download the TOEIC Goal Setter, which you can get for free by clicking the link in the description below. In this goal setter, you can write in your daily, weekly TOEIC preparation goals, and there's also a checklist where you can put in more specific tasks that you should complete before test day. Throughout this video, we're going to fill in a lot of this goal sheet, so I highly recommend you download it, print it out, and fill yours in as we go. In this video, we're looking at the top tips for 2023 to make sure you get the score you need on test day and I'm going to show you the most up-to-date, high-quality resources that you can use to prepare properly. Now, you might be planning on taking your TOEIC exam in a few weeks, in a few months, or maybe even late this year. Whenever that is, you're going to want to be ready. The first thing you want to do is set clear goals. So, this takes a few steps. First, identify the score you want. Then, figure out where you are now. You can do this easily by taking a mock test. Once you know where you are, you can start to figure out what you need to do to reach your desired score. Only you will know what it is you need to do to reach that desired score. But here are a few examples that you could write down. For listening, it could be, do one listening practice test every two weeks. Or for writing, it could be practice using a wider range of sentence structures, or reduce your grammar mistakes by 50%. As I said, getting feedback from a mock test is a great way to find out what exactly your goals should be. But you might think of more as you watch this video, so let's keep going. My next tip is to make sure you fully understand the test. Even native speakers or highly proficient English users will need to understand what they need to do on test day. For example, when you see a reading question like this, do you immediately know what to do and how to correctly answer the question? Or for a multiple choice question like this one in the listening test, are you familiar with how to eliminate the incorrect options to find the right one? The best way to understand the test from top to bottom is to get access to a large amount of practice questions, so that when you see a question on test day, you're not wasting time figuring out what you need to do. My recommendation is to check out e2testprep.com. We have hours and hours of video content reviewing all the different question types and a wide range of high-quality practice questions so that you know what to expect. Even if you're familiar with the test, you're still going to want to practice, so definitely write somewhere in the checklist section of the goal setter, find and complete practice questions. My third tip is to get help. It's very important to find some allies before you take your test, to find people who can help you to improve. Now, there are a few ways you can do this. You might know a good teacher who you can get in touch with, but there are also some great places you can go on the internet. Of course, our E2 TOEIC YouTube channel is a great place to start. We've got a handful of helpful, free videos there that will give you good advice. Subscribe if you haven't already. You might even have some friends who have taken the test. It's definitely worth asking them for some preparation advice. Tip number four is to build strong reading and listening habits. If you're in a situation where you're not using the language regularly, this is going to have a big impact. In fact, it's usually one of the first things I ask my students when I start teaching a class. Now, if you use English regularly in your work or in school, then this might not be a priority. But if you're not using English regularly, and maybe you've used some practice materials, and your scores are currently lower than you want, you will definitely want to build or strengthen these habits. Reading and listening really help in all areas. 
The more regularly you are exposed to authentic and accurate language forms, the faster you will improve. Proficient users of English use a wide range of internalized habits to make their ideas clear. They stress certain words, they clarify ideas with specific phrases in writing and in speaking. You definitely want more exposure to this. The more exposure you have, the faster you'll begin to internalize those structures and words, and the more likely you'll use them on test day. My advice for building reading habits is this. Read the news. This could be the BBC or Al Jazeera or, of course, any local English language newspaper where you live. Newspapers or news apps have articles on health, environment, technology, and business, which will expose you to a wide range of useful ideas and language. You can even read more about fun topics like sports, movies, and art. All of these topics could be on your exam. In terms of listening, I recommend checking out NPR.org. They have lots of podcasts on a range of topics that you can check out. Other options might include ABC National Radio in Australia, or again, the BBC. Of course, if you're focused on TOEIC, you'll probably want to get more familiar with the American accent. Also, if you're living already in an English-speaking country, I'd recommend checking out the local news radio. Now, if you're looking for a good podcast to help with your grammar, vocab, and pronunciation, my first recommendation would be to check out our podcast, Everyday English with E2. They're short and have lots of great ideas on how to make small improvements to your English. I definitely put into the checklist on the goal sheet Listen to the Everyday English with E2 podcast. One thing to listen for in podcasts or the radio is something called sentence stress. I find it is the biggest pronunciation hurdle for students. Now, let me be clear, it's not about accent. They are not grading you on your ability to sound American or Canadian, British or Aussie. It's about stress and intonation. If you want your ideas to be clearer and more precise, you will need to emphasize words in a deliberate way if you're aiming for a higher score. The more you listen to sentence stress in podcasts and on the radio, the more you'll be able to naturally use it in your speaking. So building these listening habits is super important. Even 10 to 15 minutes every morning can make a big difference. Let's move on. Next tip, learn from your mistakes. This is one of the most important things, not just for your exam, but for life. <laughs> if you make a mistake, don't get upset, don't feel down. Look at the mistake. Figure out why it happened, internalize the lesson, and this is for all parts of the test. If it's the reading or listening test and you get a question wrong, figure out why you were wrong and understand why the right answer is right. It's okay to make a mistake. I know that sometimes when you do look at the question for a while, you just can't figure it out. Well, just let it go. Come back to it later. You'll probably see where you went wrong and that will help you improve. Confusion is a key part of learning. Not understanding is the first step towards understanding. Now, for speaking, you should probably write this into your goal checklist. Get feedback. It's hard to learn from your mistakes if you don't know what they are. And that's why teacher support is essential. As for writing, if your teacher is like me, you'll get lots of red colored feedback. In this case, look at the feedback and figure out how to stop doing whatever it is you shouldn't be doing, or start doing what you aren't doing, or keep doing what you're doing that is going to get you that score. If you aren't organizing your ideas, clearly focus on that. If you're making lots of grammar mistakes, then focus on that. So if you're making grammar mistakes in your writing, you might put into your goal setter, write one task every week, get feedback, reduce errors by 50% in three weeks. And of course, you'll have to do a fair amount of work to accomplish that. But of course, 
Writing it down is the first step to reaching that goal. And this leads to our next point. Improve grammatical accuracy. Now, this one can be a big challenge. Grammatical and lexical accuracy. And it's not something you can fix in a day, but in a few weeks, you can improve a lot. I want you to look at something. This graph comes from research done by Heidi Dulay, Marina Burt, and Stephen Krashen. It shows how when kids and adults learn English, that they start to produce correct forms in a predictable order. So you can see here that when learning English, people typically produce articles and irregular past tense correctly before third person singular. They don't learn correct grammar instantly or because of perfect teaching. It's acquired over time, which means that they consistently improve their accuracy with time, input, output, and a little feedback. So let's think about that basic grammar structure, the third person singular. If you're a native speaker child or an adult English learner, you'll likely start by formulating it incorrectly. But over time, you'll start to say it correctly sometimes. And this frequency will increase until you're mostly formulating it correctly, at which point it is acquired. So it's not about understanding or studying the correct structures, it's about acquiring them or internalizing the correct usage. Of course, individually, the order might change. Some people might acquire these grammatical functors in a slightly different order, but it usually follows the order from the graph. Now, I know what you're thinking. Third person singular, right? You know this, right? Well, yes and no. Your brain knows it, but when you have to speak in a spontaneous or flexible situation, your mouth doesn't know it. So how do you acquire it faster? The more you read, the more you listen, the faster you're going to produce it correctly. In fact, over on our general English channel, E2 English, we have a lot of videos covering important grammar points for the speaking test. Past simple, indefinite articles, and more. Here's one video I recommend checking out. It's all about that third person singular grammar point I just mentioned. And in it, I cover a lot of the more technical aspects of how to use it. Write this down in the speaking section of the goal sheet. Watch, avoid this mistake in your English speaking test on YouTube. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to the E2 English channel. Those videos will help you not just review the grammatical rules, but help you to think about how to practice them in a meaningful way that will help you fully internalize the language. Check them out. Next tip, get deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is when you have a specific goal in mind with your study time. Let's imagine you sit down with your writing feedback, and the feedback says you're making mistakes with your subject verb agreements. And you look at your writing, and you find the mistakes, and then you take action to fix this one particular thing. You rewrite the sentences correctly. You review the grammar rules. You make new sentences using that grammar, and maybe get someone to check them. You can also do this with your vocabulary. So whatever it is, make sure to write this down in your goal setter. Improve vocabulary. Learn 15 new words per week. Put new vocabulary into sentences. Or maybe fix singular plural errors. Or use past tense correctly when speaking. Let's move on to the next one. And I know you're going to love this. Sleep. Sleep. You like this one, don't you? Well, it's true. You need to get as much sleep as you can. First of all, sleep is what allows your brain to transfer memories from the short term to long term memory. So make sure you are optimizing your sleep. Also, on test day, you definitely want to be well rested. They have even done studies on the effect of sleep on academic performance. Surprise, surprise, the group that gets a good night of sleep do better on their memory recollection task. Check out the link below for my absolute favorite TED Talk by Matt Walker about the importance of sleep. 
And here is the final piece of advice. Stay positive. Don't beat yourself up about forgetting things or about making the same mistakes again and again. This is normal. Anytime I make a mistake in one of the foreign languages that I speak, yes, of course, sometimes I get annoyed. But most of the time, I remind myself that I am getting better. I'm better than I was before and that I just need to review that mistake and the correct form again so that I will remember. Every time you get mad at yourself, you just make it harder to improve. Every time you make a mistake, it's actually an opportunity to improve. Decide how you respond and you'll decide how quickly you'll improve. Well, there you go. That's it. Those are our top tips for getting the score you want in 2023. Of course, I highly recommend checking out e2testprep.com. It has everything you need for TOEIC test preparation, including practice questions and more. You can even sign up for free if you like. Anyways, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new videos in 2023. I'll see you soon.